When it comes to gaming, we've all been guilty of staying up late button mashing on a school night, throwing our controllers in rage, or spending far too much money on microtransactions. In moments like this, it's easy to feel like you've gone too far. However, the average gamer's antics are nothing compared to the community's most obsessive, extreme, and flat-out insane members, who push video games to their limits in incredible and sometimes unsettling ways. So today, we're going to look at these gamers, checking out the craziest controllers, most unbelievable tactics, and the strangest setups as we look at the people who take gaming way too far. Till DS do us part. From Pac-Man to Master Chief, the gaming industry is home to some of the most iconic characters in modern media, and gamers can form a pretty close connection with the heroes in their favorite games. This relationship is generally harmless, but back in 2009, a romantic gamer decided to take things to the next level by falling in love with a video game character and marrying her. Love Plus is a Japanese exclusive dating simulator created by Konami that allows players to go on dates with digital women on their Nintendo DS. When a gamer who goes by Sal9000 first started playing the game in 2009, he immediately fell in love with a character called Nene Anagasaki, an anime-style lass with a love for horror movies and raccoons. Sal has described Nene as his dream woman, noting how the game changes her personality to his liking as he whispers sweet nothings into her ear through the DS's microphone. Luckily for Sal, it isn't hard to sweep a DS off its feet, and before long, his relationship with Nene became more serious, prompting him to get down on one knee and marry the character. Or, in more practical terms, marry the DS and the game cartridge inside it, I guess? Traditionally, the father of the bride pays for the wedding, but in this case, Sal had to do it himself. Coughing up the cash to buy a tux, hire a DJ, and create a slideshow that showed the highlights of their relationship. When the wedding was over, Sal kissed the screen before taking Nene back to their marital home and, well, I don't want to know what they got up to on their honeymoon. Unfortunately, the wedding wasn't legally binding, but Sal doesn't care, stating that the ceremony was simply a celebration of his love for the character and a promise to love her till death do them part. Hey, even if Nene does die, she can just respawn. Geriatric Gamer It might not seem like a long time ago, but when you look back at 2016, it feels like we were all living in a completely different world. Donald Trump was yet to begin his presidency, I still had a full head of hair, and the entire planet was taken over with the urge to catch them all, as 260 million people downloaded Pokemon Go onto their phones. Pokemon Go is currently the third most played mobile game of all time. However, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who loves it more than Chen San Yuan. This 74-year-old uses a custom bike to play the game on 72 phones at once. Since 2016, when his grandson introduced him to Pokemon Go, Chen has been obsessed with catching the rarest pocket monsters in the game, using countless devices to maximize his chances. He spends his free time cycling around New Taipei City, Taiwan, catching as many Pokemon as possible. And you can imagine all Chen's phones use a lot of electricity, and unfortunately, he can't use the Pikachus he catches to charge them up. As a result, his bike is fitted with a heavy-duty power pack that keeps them charged, letting him stay out on the streets all day. He estimates that he spends $1,000 a month on the hobby, using the cash to keep the phones topped up with internet data and purchase in-app Pokeballs and power-ups. Chen used to play Pokemon Go every day, but tragically, he suffered from a stroke in 2022, forcing him to take a six-month break from the game. Luckily, though, Chen recovered and has started playing again, though unfortunately, he's had to strip back his contraption as he can only handle 25 phones at once. That's still 25 times more impressive than the average player, though, and I think it's fair to say when it comes to playing Pokemon Go, Chen is the very best like no one ever was. C-Sharp Shooting If you turn up the volume while playing Call of Duty, you'll generally hear nothing but gunfire, explosions, and a platoon of 12-year-olds insulting your mom. However, in 2021, this all changed when the game became associated with another sound, the recorder. Most of us associate the recorder with cacophonous renditions in elementary school like this. Yeesh. But in 2021, a Twitch streamer called Dino Bino went viral for using a recorder to play Call of Duty Warzone. In Dino's hands, the recorder's shrill notes became the sounds of death and destruction. 
as he rained down hellfire one toot at a time. Let's go! The viral footage is incredible, and the unique gaming setup required some clever preparation. As Dino plays the recorder into his microphone, a piece of software records and registers the pitch of each musical note that he plays. Each of these notes corresponds to a different keyboard command, so when the software recognizes that he's playing a C note, for example, it's registered by his PC as a left click on his mouse, prompting Dino's in-game character to shoot his gun. Obviously, this isn't exactly an optimal playstyle, so as Dino clumsily moves, crouches, and shoots in games of COD, he gets killed a lot. However, he's managed to build up an impressive highlight reel of his utterly insane endeavor containing kills that I had struggled to pull off with a controller and some pretty sweet background music. A Victory Dance Playing Call of Duty with a recorder is pretty impressive. However, Dino isn't the only gamer who likes playing games in unconventional ways. Miss Mika is a streamer who's known for taking on insane challenges, like playing through entire games with one hand or playing famously difficult games using guitar chords to generate a controller input, a little like Dino's recorder. Mika's unusual playthroughs are undoubtedly impressive. And in 2022, she took on her hardest challenge yet, attempting to complete two playthroughs of Elden Ring simultaneously using a regular controller and a dance pad. Elden Ring is a notoriously difficult game, and its open world is full of powerful bosses that can take newcomers countless attempts to defeat. For most of us, completing Elden Ring with a gamepad is an achievement, so to many, Mika's challenge seemed like an impossible task. That didn't deter the streamer, though, and in December 2022, she started the challenge, connecting her dance pad to her PC and mapping each arrow to a different keyboard command, allowing her to move and attack by shifting her feet. Then it was a matter of progressing through the game, walking both characters to the appropriate boss arenas once sufficiently leveled up, and taking on all the bosses simultaneously. Mika spent just one month dancing her way to victory as she took out all of Elden Ring's bosses with her hands and feet simultaneously. Come on, chat. We can do this. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Come on, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh my god, what an epic. <laughs> The challenge required a lot of trial and error and bounce of impromptu Irish dancing, but it wasn't long before she defeated the game's final boss in both playthroughs and completed one of the most impressive Elden Ring challenges to date. Building Blocks When it comes to classic video games, there are few more iconic or universally loved than Tetris. The game was first released on the Electronica 60 computer in 1984. But since then, it's been downloaded and played on almost every electronic device imaginable. Tetris is officially the most ported game of all time, and outside of consoles and PCs, its iconic blocks and soundtrack have appeared on iPods, calculators, and most incredibly, a 21-story building in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh, that is working. <laughs> this is too cool. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this clip was filmed at MIT, the college that's home to some of the world's most intelligent students and, consequently, some of its most intelligent hackers. The giant game of Tetris appeared on the tallest building on campus in 2012, and the game was wirelessly connected to a nearby joystick that allowed pedestrians to take control of the 295-foot arcade machine. As you can imagine, the project required a lot of planning, and incredibly, MIT students first proposed the idea of building a giant Tetris on campus way back in 1993. At the time, they didn't have the technology to make it work, but two decades later, an anonymous cohort of students decided to pick up the abandoned project and attempt to solve it themselves. Equipped with newfound technology and coding techniques, the students were able to fill 153 of the building's windows with LED lights, which they programmed to connect to the joystick and run the game. 
This might sound simple, but the students reportedly spent four long years working on the extracurricular project, including a two-month period of working every night from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Working those long hours while earning your degree is pretty intense. However, when the game was displayed in 2012, all their hard work paid off, as students flooded to the building to play on the oversized arcade machine. The project worked perfectly, and other gamers have since drawn inspiration from the hackers at MIT using similar techniques to create other giant versions of Tetris. The videos of people playing these games are incredible to watch, although something tells me that the people who work inside those buildings weren't quite as impressed with the hacks. In it for the long game. Sometimes there's nothing better than lying on your couch for hours on end and binging your favorite games until your thumbs ache and your eyes sting. However, it is possible to take binge gaming too far, and some gamers put their health at risk as they game for days at a time without taking any breaks. Just like the people involved in One Story, which occurred in 2015 and involved every soccer mom's favorite mobile game, Candy Crush. That year, a hospital in LA was visited by a 29-year-old man who was complaining of thumb pain after playing on his phone. The patient explained that he'd been playing Candy Crush all day, every day, for around eight weeks, using his left hand to swipe on candy while he used his right hand for drinking and eating. Over the eight-week binge, the man had crushed plenty of candy and his own thumb, as the doctors determined that he'd ruptured a tendon while playing the game. The injury was significant enough to force him to swap his digital jelly beans for painkillers as he had to undergo surgery to reconstruct his tendon, allowing him to regain the use of his thumb and hopefully use it to delete the app. But crazy as that story sounds, he's not the only person who's taken the digital long game to the extreme. Back in 2011, a man called Jordan Wayne Long embarked on one of the most intense gaming sessions ever. After spending seven days straight playing The Lord of the Rings online while locked in a small box being transported across America. Now, this sounds completely insane, but there is some method to the madness. When Jordan isn't gaming, he's a performance artist, and for him, this bizarre gaming adventure was art. Jordan traveled from Bald Knob, Arkansas to Portland, Oregon, inside this tiny space. And although my gaming sessions are usually fueled by pizza, all Jordan consumed on his 2,000 mile journey was 28 protein bars and 4 gallons of water. If that wasn't extreme enough, when Jordan's body had processed all that water, he dealt with it by peeing into a jar that he sat next to for the rest of the trip. After seven days of driving, the box was delivered to the 1430 Gallery in Portland, where Jordan was released from the crate as part of an exhibition. But Jordan didn't just do this for kicks. He stated that he created the performance to raise awareness about PTSD specifically mirroring how people suffering from PTSD can lock themselves away and hide from reality by playing video games, only communicating with the outside world in an online space. Which is certainly a good cause, though part of me still wonders if Jordan secretly just wanted to make the most of an in-game XP boost week in uninterrupted privacy. Here comes the block. I don't know about you, but no matter how many new games I buy, I always end up playing the same old titles over and over again. Playing through The Last of Us for the 17th time is one thing, but some gamers form even closer bonds with their favorite games than the rest of us. Nobody's taken this further than Nurul Maja Bin Hassan, a 20-year-old from Florida who claims to have fallen deeply in love with the game Tetris. That's right, not a video game character, the actual game itself. Nurul describes herself as objectum sexual, meaning that she's attracted to inanimate objects instead of people. In the past, she's had crushes on treadmills, and her first serious relationship was with a calculator that she called Pierre. Hassan has spoken about her former lover with misty eyes, explaining that she loved touching Pierre's trackpad and she'd frequently use her tongue to press his buttons. She even took him to prom. Tragically, with all this attention, Pierre broke before his time, short-circuiting while being cleaned one day, cutting their relationship short. Nerul didn't stay single for long, though, quickly rebounding and falling in love with her Tetris NES cartridge in 2016. Nerul has described her relationship with Tetris as intimate, explaining that their dates involve her playing the game for hours before cuddling the cartridge in bed. She's even stated that she plans on marrying the cartridge in a proper wedding ceremony and becoming Mrs. Tetris. Obviously, Nerul's wedding wouldn't be legally binding. However, she still wants to express her love for Tetris in a symbolic ceremony. To be fair, that L block does look great in a tux, and the rush you get from clearing the line in Tetris isn't the worst foundation for a healthy marriage. Distracted Dispatcher 
With its sandy beaches and millionaire mansions, Palm Beach in Florida is a pretty laid-back place. However, in 2015, a police dispatcher at Palm Beach Sheriff's Office was found to be a little bit too relaxed on the job after he was caught playing games on his phone instead of responding to emergencies. In October 2015, dispatcher Charles M. Morris kept a 911 caller on hold for 40 minutes while finishing up a mobile game. It turns out the caller had been involved in a hit-and-run accident, but instead of receiving a police response, they received the cold shoulder as Charles kicked up his feet and kept tapping away. An investigation uncovered the fact that the same month, he waited almost 10 minutes to dispatch officers to the scene of a shooting as he was too busy staring at his screen to respond. Charles had worked for the sheriff's office for 11 years, and unbelievably, he wasn't fired for the misconduct. Instead, the police department chose to demote him to a job with fewer responsibilities, allowing him to continue protecting and serving the public, or more accurately, continue protecting his settlement and clash of clans while the taxpayers of Palm Beach pay his salary. A Marital Fallout Aside from that one guy's thumb we heard about earlier, the only things that gamers usually break are high scores and keyboards. But back in 2015, a 28-year-old man from Russia managed to break up his marriage, alienate his friends, and lose his job after playing Fallout 4 for three weeks straight. When Fallout 4 was released in November 2015, the man became so addicted to the post-apocalyptic RPG that he stopped showing up for work and started ignoring his friends and his family. After three weeks of killing Deathclaws, collecting bottle caps, and barely sleeping, the gamer finally left the digital wasteland, only to discover that his own life had exploded and the fallout was nuclear. By the time his binge was over, he'd been fired from work, his wife had left, and his friends had cut ties with him, all due to his gaming binge. The man was crushed, but instead of deleting Fallout or begging his wife for forgiveness, he decided to go a different route, suing Fallout's developers Bethesda. The man claimed that Bethesda had caused him emotional distress, arguing that if he knew Fallout was so addictive, he never would have bought it. The man asked Bethesda for around $7,000 in damages, and although his lawyers promised to take the case as far as they could, a group of legal experts at the time commented that the case would probably be thrown out of court. Unfortunately, it isn't clear whether the man ended up winning or losing the case, as there are no public updates. But either way, I doubt he managed to get his wife or job back, even with an extra $7,000 in the bank. Oh well, at least dog meat will never leave him. Get your head in the game. If you spend any time gaming online, you'll know that certain gamers are always only one loss away from throwing their controller at a wall. When you're playing at home, these fits of rage are pretty embarrassing, but generally harmless. It's only your own property you're damaging, after all. However, in China, computer gaming in internet cafes is popular and commonly sees gamers using PCs and keyboards that they don't actually own. Back in 2017, a gamer from Lan Zhao was halfway through a session in a cafe when he lost a game of League of Legends, reportedly due to his team's incompetence. Instead of taking a break, the gamer decided to get his head in the game, literally, by grabbing the screen and headbutting it until his head passed through it. The gamer completely destroyed the monitor, but it didn't go out without a fight, and after the cafe workers freed the man's head from the screen, they had to send him to the hospital for his injuries. The man's temper tantrum means that he probably won't be welcome in that gaming cafe again, but to be honest, I think that's probably for the best. He should either stop playing League of Legends altogether, or start gaming with a helmet on. A Toxic Relationship Back in June 2019, a 29-year-old gamer called Sok Duan Wan came back to his family home in Siskiyot, Thailand after a late night of drinking. Sok was heavily addicted to mobile games, so instead of sneaking in and going to bed, he cranked up the volume on his phone and started to play some games, creating enough noise to wake up his parents. As his stepfather came to investigate the commotion, an argument ensued that culminated in Sok's parents turning off the Wi-Fi. Given that Sock's choice of game was Wi-Fi dependent, needless to say, this didn't go across well. And so the gamer started freaking out, smacking at the walls of the house until he tired himself out and went to bed. The following morning, it looked like the argument was over as the family settled in for breakfast and Sock's mother headed into the garden to fetch water out of their well. However, as Sack's mother reached the well, she noticed a strange powder floating in the water. After a moment's consideration and some investigation, it dawned on her that Sock had snuck into the garden earlier that morning and filled the family's well with poisonous pesticides in an attempt to get revenge on his parents for turning off the Wi-Fi. Shockingly, Sock eventually confessed to this. Horrified, Sock's parents called the police, and their son was swiftly taken in by the authorities. Now, I've heard of toxic gamers, but after attempting to poison his own parents, Sock might just take the cake. It's a miracle that his mother spotted the poison in time and kept her son's KD ratio at zero. A Crazy Collection 
Remember Pokemon Go obsessed Chen San Yuan, who we met earlier? Well, he isn't the only gamer with a borderline insane passion for collecting. Meet Brett Martin, a 42-year-old from Littleton, Colorado, who's officially the largest collector of video game memorabilia in the world. Brett owns over 8,030 collectibles that he stores in his so-called memorabilia museum, a small room in his house that's absolutely packed with rare items. The room is an explosion of color, however Brett's collection had humble beginnings, starting when his parents gave him a small Super Mario figurine in 1989. That first hit was enough to turn Brett into a full-blown collectible addict, giving the gamer a lifelong passion for purchasing memorabilia for iconic games like Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon. As you can imagine, amassing a collection this large is pretty expensive. However, he does limit the amount that he spends on the hobby. Brett has said that he tries to keep his budget to under $500 an item, but he's willing to pay up to $800 bucks for a collectible that's particularly rare. Brett's entire collection is currently worth over $100,000, and in 2012, all the time and money he devoted to his passion paid off when he was officially given his Guinness World Record. Brett earned a spot in the 2013 Guinness World Records Gamers Edition, and he was rewarded with a new priceless item to add to his collection, a plaque that officially crowns him as the greatest gaming memorabilia collector of all time. You might argue his love of the gaming industry and its iconic characters has gone too far, but compared to some of the other crazy gamers we've seen today, I think it's fair to say Brett's case is a little more wholesome than most. Well, with that, it's time for us to shut down our PCs, unplug our consoles, and go outside and touch some grass. But which one of those gamers shocked or even impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments down below, and thanks for watching.